what's up facebook or instagram or youtube or wherever you end up watching this um i just got a question from a customers for life book buyer now if you don't know uh, i do have a private community for people that have bought the book and the course and all that stuff it's called the customers for life community and we talk about the stuff no other marketers are talking about either because they don't know how to teach it or they don't know it or they're just kind of stuck right so the question was i got these people i know they're a good fit now i know the benefit from my course it's a 997 course why am i not selling it or what is the best next step to take and i walked them through a sequence and this whole video is in the customers for life community so if you want to get in on these live q and a's about customers for life r3 help have me help you build campaigns and stuff uh, just go buy the book all you got to do is buy the six dollar book and you get access to the community Okay, so earncustomersforlife.com is where you get the book. Now, here's the concept. Here's what we do. Um, naturally, we have a list of people and we want them to buy. And so we go to scarcity. We we create deadlines. And uh, that's because we don't really understand how people buy. And we're playing a really short game. What we want to do before creating an external buying pressure, which is here's a fake deadline buy it or else right that that's a fake external pressure it does work i use deadlines i'm not throwing stones at people that use deadlines however it has to be a last resort it, you're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies we do want to pick up those pennies after we pick up the dollars and what we want to do is create what is called an internal buying pressure we want to create fomo we want to show them what it's like on the other side Right. And I'll, I'll tell you why internal buying pressure. I'll give you some examples in a minute, uh, but I, I broke it down in depth in the member community, which if you bought the book, you get access to the member community. Um, biggest reason why is when we're playing a long game, we're playing customers for life, right? Wealth acceleration, massive amounts of profit. Expectation management is king. So if we could create an internal buying pressure, somebody decides on their own, holy crap, I need that. I want that. It makes sense. I'll do anything to have that, right? And then they purchase. There is no buyer's remorse phase, which is really, really important. If you understand customers for life, the biggest place we lose revenue is in the buyer's remorse phase. It just shows up somewhere else. So we create internal buying pressure. One, it creates a consistency bias, right? Like they made the decision that they want this. They'll defend their decision to their friends. They'll sell their friends, all that stuff. Two, there's no buyer's remorse phase. Three, they're more likely to actually activate, which means use the product in the way it's intended and get the results that you've promised. So already, it's a strong argument for internal buying pressure. So we want to create an internal buying pressure first, not a deadline, which is external. So internal buying pressure, which is the equivalent of saying, hey, I do this all the time in my podcast, in my videos, in my emails. I say, hey, uh, January 1st is coming in a couple months. What I'm doing for my private clients is this. And what I'm doing for myself is this, right? Because, and I give them a reason why, and they go, wow, that I never thought of that. So... I recommend that you do that as well. I'm just being helpful. That's my recommendation. Here's an inside look at what we're doing. Good luck. And what we want naturally is for people to go, oh, well, how do I become a private client? I want somebody to do that for me. I want to do that. Can you show me how? Right. So by not making a pitch, but instead addressing the adoption decisions, which is how people actually buy, we create a lot of internal pressure to do something by educating them and showing them that this is what they're doing and this is what they should be. And there's a gap there. We've created the pressure to close that gap, but it didn't come from us. We're not telling them to jump. We're just showing them the gap. They need to feel an internal pressure to jump so that they take responsibility for the relationship moving forward. Right? So step one, we always try to create an internal buying pressure. If they do not buy, step two is we create a little bit of external pressure from the place of leadership. Hey, I've been where you are. I have clients that are where you are. I'm telling you 
that you are in trouble if you don't do this. As a leader, I'm telling you, you need this. It doesn't have to be me. You don't have to hire me, but you have to hire somebody or you're in trouble. Okay. That's a tiny external pressure, but um, it's from a place of leadership and being helpful. So one, create an internal buying pressure by being helpful and addressing the five adoption decisions. Nobody's doing this. Nobody out there is doing this, which is why it is so effective. And the lifetime value is greater because the pressure was internal. They put it on themselves. They don't have unrealistic expectations or any kind of biases that make them bad clients, right? Really, really important. Then very last resort, very last resort, we create a really strong external buying pressure. This goes away in four days. This goes away in 24 hours. Here's a bunch of bonuses. I am trying to convince you to buy this. This is an external pressure from me, which is fine. You're going to have a little bit higher refund rate. You're going to have a little bit less activation, and that's all fine. It still should still be cash flow positive. However, if we start with that internal buying pressure, we're going to get chargebacks and refunds and non-activation from people that otherwise would have been great clients had we created that internal buying pressure to begin with. Okay, so I just broke down how to do this in um, in the, the member community. So if you go to earncustomersforlife.com, you buy the book, what's going to happen is you're going to get an invite to the member community, and I jam on this live. Every time somebody has a question, hey, I got these people sitting right here. How do I sell them? I'll just go live, and we'll talk about it. Everybody gets to watch. So it's the member community. Uh, but create that internal buying pressure first. Then have a leadership uh, campaign, which I teach in the book. Both of those things are in the book. And then a deadline. Okay? Do not start with a deadline. You are severely handicapping long-term gains. You're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies. Pick up the dollars, pick up the quarters, then pick up the pennies, right? Don't pick up all the pennies and miss all the dollars. So internal buying pressure, leadership, external buying pressure. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. It is all laid out in the book. That's what I wrote it for. There's also the course that breaks it down and all that stuff. Uh, and if you just want me and my team to do it for you, we also do that. But uh, just start thinking about the adoption decisions, which are in the book. Um, and how do I create the internal buying pressure so that when they come in, they have ownership of the relationship. Their, their expectations are managed already. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me know. Go buy the book.